What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video and today we're doing price reveal reaction part two. This will be the final one because all the prices have now been teased. So for some squads we've got like four players, for some there's a few more I think and then we've got full squad lists for other ones as well. Um, so I'm going to go through that in this one. My hope is now that they've done that for two days that the game is going to release on Wednesday. So obviously the FPL content will start there. Just for anyone that's worrying about the Euro stuff that is definitely coming back. I will have team selection on thursday and on friday i'll probably do the match preview the reason i'm doing it that way round is because all of the decisions for our unlimited transfers are based on who goes through and we don't know which teams are definitely going to go through yet obviously we got some of them italy netherlands etc uh, but we're still waiting on the whole rest of them so there's little point in discussing it especially when there's fpl content to be made as well but also when we don't know who's going through so once we do i'll be on that i promise but hopefully fpl launches tomorrow so we can kick off with that as well but i'm not in the know i don't have any contacts unfortunately i don't know when it's going to launch my gut just tells me it's tomorrow because they've done the price reveals it would make sense right get it released on a wednesday uh, and job done so we're going to go for all the prices one by one i'm just going to talk through kind of my reaction my thoughts on certain players i will say right just before we talk about villa I, I'm still going to be excited when the game launches, right? I'm still going to be streaming, etc. It does feel like they've killed a little bit of the hype because for some teams, they've released the whole player list. Now, the whole point when the game opens, when you do a stream or even if you're not making content, right? You log in, you start checking all the players. For some teams, we already know them. I could pretty much make my squad right now and I genuinely think without the, ga without the game being open, I think I can make a squad that's competitive from game week one with the players we've already seen that's how many they've released obviously injuries and stuff might change it but i think we've had that many you can make a squad at this point so that kind of sucks but it is what it is that's how they've done it and hopefully there's a reason for that and they're going to open tomorrow it could be thursday it could be friday it could be the weekend it could be next week who knows so i'll go through the ones we got Villa was one of the ones where they released four and then on the website there was more on the Villa website but it wasn't all the players so Buendia is 6.5 so he's 1.5 million cheaper than Jack Grealish that's not bad now creativity wise Buendia is decent right if you look at chances created if you go to expected data I looked at Buendia's last season in the Premier League for Norwich it wasn't that close to what Grealish was this year or, or you know last season but there's a 1.5 million price difference, and now Buendia is playing in a better team as well. So there's a genuine conversation to be had there. Do you go to Grealish, where I think 8 million is a good price, by the way, um, or do you spend 1.5 million less and go for Buendia? Martinez comes in at 5.5. That was always going to happen. He won't be an option. He'll be in a void for me now. All the defenders are five, so Mings, Konza, Cash, Target, um, and Ashley Young's five as well. They didn't say if he's a defender or a midfielder. I'm assuming he's going to be a defender. Uh, and then you've got Watkins at 7.5. So most of the good strikers from last year, so your Watkins, your Bamford, your Calvert-Lewins, etc., they're all over 7.5 or 8. I think they're fair prices, to be completely honest with you. So I don't mind the Villa prices too much. I think there's good players to be had there. And the fixtures for the opening three, maybe even four of the first five, if you include Everton, are pretty good. So Watkins or Grealish could be genuine options, I think, from the get-go. One thing I will say as well, we move on to Brentford where we've got the full um, team list. It feels as though prices overall are too low. Now, usually what happens when the game launches is everybody panics. All the players they had last year that were cheap, they've gone up in price. Therefore, they feel like they can't build a team, right? It happens every single season. But from what I'm seeing, the prices are probably a little bit too cheap for the players that we know we want. It seems fairly easy to build a squad at the moment. I'll obviously do a first draft video and stuff like that. And things will change. Players will get injured. New players will come in. You know, if Kane moves to Man City, that obviously changes things from two premium midfielders. Suddenly, you might want one premium mid and one premium forward. So we're two months away. A lot can change. But right now, it does, doesn't does feel too bad to make a squad. There's some players who I think are too highly priced still. Though I don't think everyone's underpriced, which we'll talk about in a minute. But let's talk about Brentford. So Tony, Ivan Tony is someone that every... I mean, I've look, I don't watch the championship. I'll be honest with you. I still need to do my research on who are good options from the championship teams, how they might perform, etc. That's not what this video is about. But Ivan Tony is someone I've heard talked about as an FPL option before Brentford are even confirmed going up. Like, if Brentford go up, then Tony's going to be our team. If they win this game and they go up, that he'll be in my team. He's 6.5 million. So they've not priced him like Bamford last year, which was 5.5. They obviously don't want to run into that mistake again. But he is on penalties. 
right, which is good. He scored a lot of goals last season. So did Watkins, Bamford to a certain extent, etc. In their se- their last season in the championship, but Tony's just done it and he's on penalties. He looks like a good price. Another player that came up a lot, and I've seen different comments on him so far, is Embuemo. I've definitely got that wrong, haven't I? 5.5 million midfielder who has played in a variety of positions, according to a lot of people up front as well. And his goals and assists record so far are really decent. For most seasons now, for the last like kind of four or five seasons, he's quite a young player. It's been like over 0.5, which is decent. But uh, then some other people said, but he can also play in other positions like left wing back or whatever it might be. And at that point, you probably don't want him in your team. So it's going to depend where we think he plays. And if he's going to move around a bit, he might not be the option that some people think. But again, if you're watching this, you're a Brentford fan. You're thinking this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. You're correct. I don't know much about Brentford. I will learn over the next two months. And obviously, I will share my knowledge. I speak to Brentford fans, etc. But that's what I've seen. Uh, and obviously, as, you, as you'd imagine, most of the defensive players, etc. are 4.5. I probably won't be going with too many uh, newly promoted sides. I think, to be honest, most of the... Not necessarily the the top six, etc., but a lot of the you know current Premier League play, uh, teams that have been around for a while have all all got like a five or a four point five million option. So I don't think we're going to have to go to newly promoted sides, but never say never. Chelsea only gave us four players. I mean, Kante, like who cares? They gave us Hoiberg from Spurs as well. Who cares? Kante's five million, brilliant. None of us will ever put him in our teams. Uh, Vernon, nine million. Look, I don't mind that. He's priced on potential still. He didn't have a great season last year, right, by his standards that he came from the Bundesliga. So everyone's writing him off already. And to be honest, with the fixtures they start off with, Arsenal, Liverpool, Spurs, City, we're not starting with Chelsea players. I think that's fair enough. But Werner, I wouldn't completely write out of your mind as a nine million option. He could make a mockery of that price if he ever gets back to scoring goals for one but going back to his kind of Bundes, uh, Bundesliga um, kind of record it would have been much more interesting for me to see Chilwell and Havertz and Mount because Mendy and Aspilicueta are 6 million fine if Chilwell's also 6 million that's a really good price if he's 6.5 it becomes a bit of a conversation I still think he's probably worth it but the fixtures would really have to be there um, to go for him so Mendy and Aspilicueta are probably a bit expensive when you can get players from like Liverpool, Man United etc for slightly higher or slightly lower price which we'll see in a second um, just really quickly by the way on Brentford I don't think their start is that bad it's not great but it's not awful so I don't think someone like Tony for 6.5 is that bad of an option so that's Brentford uh, Chelsea let's go to Everton great fixtures all right I started with Calvert, uh, Calvert-Lewin last year I got a bit mocked for it I won't lie he started off really well to be honest by the time game week one came along he was owned by quite a few people if anything, he's got an easier start this year from what I remember last year because he started with Spurs. If you remember, he scored from a Luca Dean free kick. I remember it so well. I was watching it. This is the first game of last season, by the way. This is what FPL does to you. Luca Dean on the left side of the pitch, outside of the box. Obviously, it's a free kick. He crosses it in, bullet header to the top left-hand corner from Calvert-Lewin, and that just sparked my season off straight away. And I think he scored a hat-trick in game week two. So... 8 million, I'm considering him again. That's a 1 million price hike, but he needed it, I think. 7.5 or 8, he was always going to be. Such a good start to the season with those fixtures. Luca Dean, by the way, at 5.5, he's raised eyebrows from everyone because he's had a price decrease. Surprised about that. What I will say is, if you like your stats, your expected goals conceded, etc., Everton were poor last year. They were one of the worst defences. They were easily in the bottom, like, 7 or 8, I think, out of all teams in the league. We'll have to wait and see who comes in and manages them. But 5.5 looks like a bargain with those three. This is what I'm telling you about making a squad already. Calvert-Lewin, Luca Dean, there you go. They're in. That's two players. Salah, Rafinha, Sanchez, who we spoke about yesterday. I'm already building a squad and the game's not already out. Get the game launched, people. Uh, Richarlison's cheaper than Calvert-Lewin. He absolutely had to be. Maybe even could have gone a million cheaper, to be honest. Because I don't think many people are going to quibble at paying 0.5 more. Don't rule out uh, James Rodriguez. All right, I'm assuming that's him. Might, do they usually put Hammers in, not Rodriguez? It's got to be. Yeah, of course it's him. He's in the picture. Um, is there some guy called James at, at, at Everton? Don't write off that 7 million, right? I know he's injury prone, but he was great at the start of last season. Do you know what the start of the season had in common with... Not in common, but you know why? Because he didn't have to play loads of games in a row. It was like one week, game, one week, game. One week game. So when you get to Christmas and stuff and the games are coming thick and fast, he just couldn't cope with it. 
So I'm not completely ruling him out. Because I haven't seen a huge amount of midfielders around his price I think are really, really good options apart from Rafinha. So do not rule out an Everton triple up. I'm serious. Everton. Triple. Can you believe that? Leicester. Okay. Vardy's had a price increase. He's had a price increase, right? I'm actually going to bring the site up on another screen here just so I can have a quick look. But he didn't... um, he didn't score as many points this season as last. I don't think. I'm just looking here. Get rid of my water bottle. He scored, oh, he scored 187. The, the season before, it was 210. So he scored less points and his price has gone up. I don't get it. I don't get it. He's one year older. He's, I think he's close to 35, if not already 35. And look, he did really well again last year. 15 goals, 14 assists. Now, to be fair, some of that was penalties. But we know he's got penalties. So that doesn't matter. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he starts off. The The start of the season's not awful. Wolves should probably be grey instead of green. Um, but Norwich, Burnley are in there as well. It's not the worst start to the season. The key thing for me is, will they carry on with two strikers? Because Daka is another player they're looking at buying as well, apparently. He just hasn't been completely signed yet. If they do, then Ian Atcher for 7.5 is a bargain. An absolute bargain at that price, given his stats and how well he performed versus Jamie Vardy when Barnes is back though if they go to like a a three so two wingers and a striker then that that kind of muddies the water a little bit but given how well they played with the two and how good Ian Atcher was I wonder if Rodgers want to keep that going because look Vardy's not going to be leading the line for Leicester for too many more years right he's just he's just not going to be able to um so it'd be interesting to see what they do there if they go with two and Ian Atcher looks like he's going to start game week one bargain 7.5 what i really like the fpl have done this year is a lot of the goalkeepers for some good clubs are 5 million so they've brought the price down instead of like putting a bunch of 5.5 and then like edison and allison at six or whatever they were last year they're starting to bring some of them down to five that starts to make them options genuine conversation starters for these goalies so shamichael for 5.0 million i'm going to assume that castagna and Pereira are all going to be 5.5 I quite like that. The only problem is, it does feel like it's going to be a bit too easy to make a squad, like I said before. But looking decent, Madison's still seven. Not a bad price with those starting fixtures. Again, comparable to Hammers Rodriguez, maybe. Um, Slightly worse fixtures, but perhaps less injury prone. Uh, Although, obviously, he did get an injury last season, which kept him out for a little while. Um, Man City up next. Pretty poor start to the season. Spurs, Arsenal, Leicester, Chelsea. I mean, you wouldn't put it past them to beat all these teams, of course, but it ain't great. Maybe not Chelsea, right? I know, Champions League, etc. Um, De Bruyne is coming at 12. I think that's more what he can do rather than what he did last season. Obviously, he had a bit of an injury last year. So in the end, let me just see here. Uh, he scored, he finished on 11.8 million, he scored 141 points, but obviously the season before he, he won, uh, he got 251, what they what they tend to do with the pricing is, they are pricing them as if, what if they were fit for the whole season, how would they perform, right, which I get, so I don't think De Bruyne for 12 million is too bad, because he got a lot of injuries last year, he still got 12 assists, 6 goals, he did underperform his XG I think as well, so 141 points not great, I think they could have brought him down a little bit, because I think the season before, yeah the season before is 11.5, why have they put him up, that actually makes no sense, I don't get that, you have a much worse season, he only played 800 minutes less, and he got seven less goals and nearly half the assists. That that makes no sense now I think about it. This is why I'm doing this reaction live while I record. Yeah, I don't get that. He should have he should have stayed the same. That makes no sense. I mean, 12 million, he can perform like a 12 million player, but he didn't last year. I don't get that. He should have been lower. And I'll tell you what, Sterling should have been lower before. I've already discussed this with some people on Twitter. Again, can Sterling go go mad and score loads of points? Of course, for 2017, 18. 18, 19, and 19, 20, he got more than 200 points, okay? That is a player that should be priced at 11 million plus. But last year, he only got 154. We know he's, well, he wasn't first choice towards the end of last season. It was Foden and Mares on, on the wings. Um, and I just think if, you, if you're pricing Sterling based on potential, Mares is 9 million. He scored more points per match than uh, I think any other midfielder last year. Let me just, again, let me just quickly check. For Man City, he was... Sorry, Mahrez was 5.4 points per game. De Bruyne was 5.6. And Sterling was 5. So why why is Mahrez 2 million less than Sterling? If it's because of minutes, they're not first choice. They're not going to play every game. Well, guess what? Neither Sterling. For me, that price for Sterling is a bit lazy. 
I think Maris is possibly underpriced, and I think Foden will be too. I think Foden comes in at 8.5 or 9 to be close to Mares. And I think if they're 2 million less than Sterling, that makes no sense. So I think they've got it wrong with Man City. I don't think De Bruyne should have gone up in price. At least, I, I didn't really think much of it when I first saw it, but now I've looked. I'm not happy about that at all. Diaz for 6 is good. Man City is one of the best defences in the league, comparable with the likes of Azpilicueta at Chelsea. It makes sense. So I like that price. Stones will almost certainly be the same price. I don't think they'd put him at 5 five we'll have to wait and see probably no good because of the fixtures but don't rule out a city captain for norwich at home I'm not happy about those sterling de bruyne prices um man united we've got the full list i'm not going to go through everyone just some standouts so bruno fernandez comes in at 12 same price as um de bruyne look i think with these fixtures leeds southampton walls newcastle villa etc it's going to be difficult to not start the season with him because so many people will have him and i think one thing i need to do this year um Look, I always say don't pick on ownership, but it does get to the point sometimes where someone's so highly owned, it just it doesn't make sense to go against them. So if Fernandez got like 50% ownership with those fixtures on penalties, given the amount Man United sometimes get, it's hard to go without him. I think you probably have to find the funds. If Kane goes to City, different story probably, but right now he looks good. Brave people might go for Rashford, save 2.5 million, and instead of going for like a 5.5 million midfielder, maybe you bump them up to 7 or 8 or whatever it might be. Um, Greenwood's still in at 7.5. He didn't score that many goals, to be fair, last year. He did okay. Um, he's also not completely nailed on still. Cavani's there, so Cavani up front. Could be Rashford on the right, Pogba on the left, so Greenwood's a minute's worry. Cavani has come in at 8.5, which is decent. I, uh, Luke Shaw's 5.5. It feels a bit too low. He should be more expensive than the rest. Like, if you've got Maguire, Shaw, wan at 5.5, why would you get anyone that's not Luke Shaw? It makes no sense. He probably should have been 6 million. He's the most attacking out of all of them. Uh, and again, he'll probably be in a lot of people's squads because of that. Again, goalkeepers are down to 5 million. So if we know who's first choice out of Henderson and De Gea, like I'm saying Sanchez, guaranteed goalkeeper at 4.5, but there's now some other goalies at 4.5, which we'll come on to. Um, and you can go up to the, like a Schmeichel, De Gea, Henderson, etc. for just 0.5 million more. So you could get a starting goalkeeper for Man United plus a 4 million bench fodder. So for 9 million, you can cover your goalkeepers and have someone from Man United. That's pretty good. Especially at the start when you don't necessarily know who the 4.5 million goalkeeper, like decent one will be. I still think Brighton's fixtures are good enough to go there. But the conversation can be had now. I like that. So I think some prices are incorrect. I think goalkeeper pricing I really like. Um, Newcastle... Wilson, definitely looking at him. Fixtures are looking good for Newcastle. Right now, if Ianacho was nailed, I think Calvert-Lewin, Wilson, and Ianacho probably look pretty good. Maybe Watkins, but you could go for Buendia or Grealish instead. So, I don't know. Maybe it's not as easy as I'm saying. It's easy to build a squad. Maybe not easy to pick the right player. Um, so, maximum 6.5. Probably wouldn't look at him. Dubravka for 4.5 is good. Again, they've got a good set of fixtures. Okay, Can they defend? We'll have to wait and see. But he makes a lot of saves. So, I like him. Almiron 5.5, maybe. Fixtures are there. But I think Wilson and Dubravka are genuine options. I quite like them. Uh, I like the fixtures as well. So I'm definitely looking at Newcastle. Southampton, we can brush over this. There's no one of interest, in my opinion. Um, Walker Peters, Vestergaard for 5 million. Just not going to go there, I don't think. Defensively, not good enough. Goalkeepers are 4.5. Who's first choice? Fixtures aren't that great. Danny Ings is 8, though. So Danny Ings now being the same price as like Calvert-Lewin, 0.5 more than Ian Nacho. Uh, Wilson etc he's a genuine option now if he can stay fit maybe not for the start of the season again looking at those fixtures but possibly I, I think maybe moving around those players those front three two or three if you go cheap but when, when I say cheap I mean mid price that could be the way to play Adams at seven million is not a bad option but I think for most people they'd rather pay 0.5 or a million more to get someone else Wall Prowse is 6.5 he'll always play he'll always tick over but you're trying to get the most points you can for like a certain period of time. You don't want to just bring in Ward Prowse and just keep him the whole season, pretty much. No, that's not what most people would do anyway. I don't think he's a great option, to be honest. Um, Watford, obviously newly promoted. Um, Backman and Foster, 4.5 and 4 for the goalkeeper combo. Maybe you could go there. Um, otherwise, um, there's, what's his name, Saar, 6 million. So he's a bit cheaper than Rafinha and Ward Prowse, etc. Fixtures aren't bad to start, but they're not great. Like Villa's probably the best fixture for the first four. So maybe we can see how they set up and how they play and then look at them from game week five onwards. But right now, I'm not really looking at them. What I will say is the forwards, so Deeney, Gray, etc. They're all 5.5 or less. 
So no six or above. So again, whoever comes in, whoever's first choice by the start of the season, again, I'll do all my research and find that out. Could be an option just because of the price, kind of Bamford price, maybe. But we'll have to wait and see again. If you're a Watford fan, let me know who I'm missing in the comments below. And I'll make sure to heart some of them as well. And lastly, we've got Wolves. Rui Patricio, no way I'm going there. I mean, Bruno Lager, we'll see what he does with this team. I do like Sice at 5 million because his attacking threat's good. I like Johnny at 4.5 million. If they were to go to like a wingback system and he was back in and fit, I really like him. And Cody's only 4.5 as well. That ain't a bad price, okay? I'd much rather go for Cody at 4.5 than Patricio at 5. So being able to cover the Wolves defence. And by the way, Wolves' expected data for defence was quite good last year. I know it didn't necessarily translate into points. But from game week 4 onwards, Watford, Brentford, Southampton, etc., I don't think we should completely write off. We know Cody's nail. We know he now goes up for corners as well. I know uh, he hasn't scored many goals. But him and Johnny at 4.5, I think, are genuine options when the fixtures are correct. In terms of attackers, maybe Neto, maybe Triori, but they're okay. They're mid-price uh, midfielders. They are what they are. Again, if you're just going for one 6.5, how is it not Rafinha? It's just it's too easy. Rafinha's underpriced. He should have been more expensive. Uh, nice to see Jimenez price, 7.5 million. Again, we know how good he's been in the past. Can he back, get back to his best? Let's wait and see until he gets back on a pitch playing properly. But I quite like Wolves. I quite like Wolves fixtures from game week four. And I quite like the price of... Um, Johnny and Cody, I think that's decent. Semedo, Sice, Bolly. Sice might be worth paying the extra for, maybe Semedo. But um, if, if Johnny can get that left wing back spot, if that's how they play, good option. Good option, I think. So there we go. Let me know in the comments below what you think of these prices. Who have I messed up? I know I got McLean wrong yesterday, by the way. Uh, I'm an idiot. What can I say? But I kind of did say it at the time as well. Do give the video a like if you've enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button. Like I said, hopefully FPL launches tomorrow. So I'll do a live stream as soon as it does. I've got the thumbnail ready and everything. Uh, and then we'll be looking at first drafts. I will have team selection and match day preview for the Euros as well. Uh, I'm not going to forget about that, by the way. I will be doing content throughout the rest of the tournament but obviously because we're past the group stages now the, there's a bit more of a rest period where there's no games which is actually handy for content because you can wait for them to finish and then do it so it'll be a mix and match of fpl and euro stuff so yeah a bit longer that video but a bit more to say sterling and de bruyne i don't like it um i feel like they got some prices wrong but maybe i'm wrong because the prices have been pretty good the last few years Give it a like if you enjoyed it. Hit subscribe if you're new around here. I can't wait for the game to launch. I'll see you on the stream hopefully tomorrow. If not, I don't know. See you at some other point.